And we're back on Build Phase TV. I'm Mr. Ben. And I am Person. And joined by Whitman. <laughs> and today we are going to talk about the Treant. Jinx, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10. All That's right. not how Jinxes work, okay? So, let's start with the pamphlet. Yes, like always. Okay. So the Treant is one of these characters that has a sub-economy that's unique to the character, and that is in the form of spirits. Every turn he gets to grow one, as well as there's various cards and abilities that let him grow additional spirits throughout the course of the game. Every spirit starts off as a seedling, which has a fairly weak effect. You can spend it to re-roll one of your dice. I almost never do this. How often do you actually spend a seedling? Uh... Actually, I've done it quite a few times. The, most okay. of the time, I only ever do it to if I have like five sixes and I really, I mean, four sixes and I really want that ult. Well, that's not a whole lot of times. That's a very specific situation you're describing. It's better than a mini ult. <laughs> so, I think generally speaking, while there are times where you'll spend a seedling, uh, it's probably not going to be for its own effect. I, like, we'll yeah. get to some of the powers where you can spend... He'll probably talk about his board ability that's passive. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, if you already have a seedling at the start of your turn, then you get to grow a spirit into the next size bigger, which is a sapling. Now, the sapling has two different control effects. I think both of them are quite good. Uh, you can spend one it... One of them is... I guess... No, you shall. You can spend it to heal one and gain a CP, or you can spend the sapling and a CP to draw a card. Depending upon your... There, there's situations in most games where either one of those is useful, and the flexibility is a big part of why the sapling is so powerful. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, I'm just going to say it now, I'm guessing you're going to go with the uh, one CP draw a card because you like having hand. I go with the heal most of the time, in my uh, opinion. Well, most of the time I don't play Control Treant. So, like, in okay, in Dice Throne Adventure, every single turn... I'm spending a sapling to heal one and gain a CP. Exactly. Particularly in solo, because you just need to stay in front of it. If you wait until your health is in, in a dangerous spot to start... You're going to be dead before you can spend them. Yeah, you're going to be dead before you have the ability to spend them. Uh, in a one versus one game, if for whatever reason I feel like I have to play the control style of Treant, then it kind of... what do I'm What am I hurting for? Do I need the cards? Okay, then I'll do the card draw. Do I need the health? Okay, then I'm going to do the health. But most games, I prefer to skip over both seedling and sapling and go straight to dryad. Uh, the dryad spirit, you can only get, and you can only have one of this, uh, you can only get it by growing a sapling. And this has two different effects. The, the less important effect, in my opinion, is, well, there's certain matchups where it's really important. But it lets you spend the Dryad to prevent an incoming negative status effect. That is huge in Dice Throne Adventures. Like, massive. Because some of those status effects, like Dominance and uh, Hex, uh, and the one that takes Silence, I think it is, that takes away straights. Some of those are no, really big. And, and, wait, isn't Hex the one that gets rid of all sixes? Yeah. And you can't even reroll them. It just becomes a blank die. So, in a one... It sucks. <laughs> In a one versus one... You do the damage modifier. I like spending the Dryad as plus three damage. Generally speaking, I like to play a more aggressive Treant. Uh, let's say this much, though. If you're doing a pure attack, which I don't think this guy has, you cannot use the Dryad because pure damage is its own sure. damage, and you cannot modify it, that kind of damage. I must say that much before sure. people are like, ooh, pure damage, that's undefendable with an attack modifier. I think most people who are probably deep enough in to the dice throne like ecosystem that they're watching this video probably know pure damage can't be modified uh, but in case somebody's new for somebody welcome who just we're happy came. to have you and here's a piece of information that's important you can't modify pure damage i remember we did we had like look through the rule book for the first time like yes. what the heck is pure damage on the ninja well i i mean i don't think there's anything wrong with having to learn mm -hmm. a game like, oh, no, 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 no. Every fact in the world, if we didn't have you, to, you don't know it until you know it. I mean, yeah, say, if we didn't have, uh, weren't able to learn games, then you can't see the shelf, but we have a giant shelf of games over that direction yes. that we wouldn't have otherwise. If we, we couldn't learn them, then we couldn't games. learn them. Okay, well, let's let's keep moving through the treant here. Uh, next up, Barbed Vine. Now, this feels like a low-impact 
status effect. The way it works is you inflict it on somebody and if they take a second reroll, they take one damage. If they take their third reroll, they take two damage. So they end up with a maximum of two extra damage. So you could kind of look at a barbed vine as an effect that says deal two damage. Often you don't get the two damage, but that's sort of a way to think about it. It's a, a status effect that's worth about two points of damage in its best case scenario. Awesome. This is not a control status effect. While it does seem like it's trying to deny your opponent the ability to do rerolls, I think the vast majority of the time people will push through the reroll, uh, they'll take the damage, and try to chase after what they want. This is a damage effect. This is like poison. This is like delayed poison. This is in in my mind. I put barbed vine in the same bucket as those effects, and I do not put it in the same bucket as things like entangle or constrict, which are I... kind of strictly control effects. Uh, so. I like this status effect. Okay, yeah, I think barbed vine is sneaky better than it looks at first glance. It looks like an entangle, but actually, it's a poison, and I think that's much better. In my opinion. Okay, so the last effect that the, the train has... A possibly a burn, too. Uh, the last effect that the train has is the Wellspring. You can spend this to roll a d6, and you gain half the result. So you can heal Round between 1 and 3 off the Wellspring. So it's like Vegas baby for health. Uh, I spend these as soon as I get them. I never sit on them. I don't give my opponent the ability to get rid of it in some way or take it from me and then use my healing on themselves. Yeah, I agree with that. I like the status effect, but just use it when you get the, it. Don't save them up. In Dice Throne Adventures, this status effect is great. And when you combine it with the Trance Mythic card, which I know that because... Getting off we're topic, not supposed eh? to, We're not supposed to do spoilers about Mythic stuff on Dice Throne Adventures. I will yeah. just say, this status effect gets much better in Dice Throne Adventures, in I my mean, opinion. I mean, we could just switch the entire review into a Dice Throne so, Adventures review <laughs> that we don't have set up yet at all. So, the, di <laughs> <laughs> the dice face for this guy is 3 two, one which is the most user-friendly dice face. We, there isn't one that's easier than 3 two, one in the game right now. Um, that is is, I think, not totally revealing of how difficult some of his roles actually are. This character does have some trickier role targets. This guy is definitely... I don't think you should play him as your first guy. No. Honestly. I Never. don't think any of the hero, any of the heroes with a sub-economy I do not think are heroes that people should start with on their first game of Dice Okay, Star. we haven't got there yet, but Season 2. Do not play Huntress on your first game. They are so hard, and she, I played so many games. She doesn't have a sub economy. She has like a whole. Well, I guess you could consider Nira's health to be a sub economy. Yes, I agree. Anyway, so looking at the Treant board, uh, I like the presence of the spirits in the artwork itself, kind of climbing all over him. I think that's a really cool effect. I. I feel like every time we look at these and go, what do you think of the art? We go, oh, it's great art. Manny does great art. So, yeah. I mean, he does do great art. That continues to be true. So, you can't... When we say this, it's to the point where all of his artwork is great. So, oh, um, I'm do, looking. We, do we even know? I'm looking for something that isn't great just so I can call it out. So, should we even do the whole artwork thing? Yeah. Because you already know we're going to say it's great because well, he's an amazing artist. It, Sure. Well, let's not dwell on it, because people know what we think, right? <laughs> yes. All right, so we're going to move into the Treant's uh, main board here, and we're going to start with his basic attack. The damage on Splinter is 5, 6, 7. This is okay. 5 is not good damage. 6 and 7 is all right. This is an unupgraded basic attack. I like this one as a, as a basic. Like, first turn 5 damage, you roll 3. That's amazing. I don't know. Amazing's a bit strong. Five damage is not a lot of damage, and you have to spend a spirit in order to inflict the barbed vine at this tenth. level. At the upgrade, uh, interestingly, the damage does not go up at all on this basic upgrade, uh, but it does make the barbed vine automatic instead of costing you a spirit, and that is absolutely worth one CP. Which is honestly every time. Honestly, I absolutely love the upgrade, and it's worth. Like you said, it's definitely worth one CP. Honestly, I think this should be a two CP, and I say honestly. Well, too there much. is a two CP version of the Splinter upgrade, which again keeps the damage exactly the same. And I, I want to touch on damage a little bit later with the Treant in a more broad sense. The three of a kind grow spirit. To me, that's gravy. I, I don't think that's something you're going to use like a dice manipulation card to chase after. But it anything that gives the Treant spirits 
we like as the trinket player, for sure. Uh, honestly, I, most of the time, if, most of the time, I will actually just keep the level one upgrade, and sometimes, I mean, it's a three of the kind, I almost never get that. Whichever one I get. I just don't usually. I, I use. I, I don't care. I usually play whichever one I have in hand, yeah. Yeah. But then the other one I just sell. I yeah. If you already have Splinter 2 down on the board, how late in the game is it before you see Splinter 3? You know and what I mean? And when you do the, see, you do sell it at that well, point. Well, and all upgrades lose value over the course of the game. Uh, in order for you to get any value out of an upgrade, you have to roll it. If you're on the last turn or two of the game, the Splinter 3 upgrade at that point probably isn't worth it. It's not worth the 2 C CP. You, this you is, sell it for some dice manipulation. This is a power that you're going to use a lot as the Treant, and I'll, I'll touch back on that. It, it doesn't seem like that strong of a power, and it's not, but there's a reason you're going to use a lot, but I, I'll talk about that when we get to the small straight. So Fertilize. This is the Treant's sub-economy. Uh, there's no upgrade for this. It just lets you grow a spirit every single turn. Growing spirits is always good. Yeah. Right? Uh, There's not much to say about it. And this. the fact that that's just his normal ability, it makes sense. If this wasn't on the board, this character wouldn't work. Yeah, he was. So. I, if this wasn't on the board, the character wouldn't exist. Yeah, so it, <laughs> it, it's fine. Uh, next, we come up to 10. Now, this is a power that if you are on the control path with the treant you want to play slow you want to build up your spirits and you want to unleash your spirits in the form of like overgrowth or something uh this is going to be a really important power if you're on the damage path with the treant this could still be an important power because first turn of the game you could use it to juice your spirit economy get you to your first dryad and now you're doing big damage and with the damage treant spending that level three uh, Dryad, that level 3 spirit, is absolutely crucial. It, that's a huge component of your total damage output over the course of the game. It's a big deal. Mm -mm. So, the Tend upgrade will give you Cultivate, which two sticks and two sixes, I don't think this is a power you chase after, but there are absolutely going to be times where you just luck into that on your first roll and you have no spirits on your board and this completely bails you out of a bad situation. Yeah. If I draw this, I mean, like you said, uh, all cards, all upgrades lose value the farther you get in the game. But if you draw this on first turn and you play it, you feel good about that. Yeah, particularly if you're in a matchup where you want to be the control treant, the the, Col cultivate. the tend to upgrade, the cultivate, both of these are really strong powers. Uh, they're both kind of like backup powers for from a failed ultimate or a failed mini ult, which is good. Getting the ability to inflict the barbed vine, the gain the wellspring, grow four spirits, draw a card. The tend to upgrade is almost for sure worth it within the first few turns of the game, and maybe even a little bit deeper in the game if you're playing the type of trant that wants to roll this power over and over again. Uh if you're on damage treant, you sell this card, you roll the turn ten to the first turn of the game, and then never again, and you just do damage from hand. Uh, yeah, but the only problem with this is, man, I wish it took less sixes. Two sixes is kind of hard. Uh, it's a really strong power. You're you're getting your money's worth of sixes. <laughs> I I know, I know. No. But most of the time, most of the time, I'm the kind of person I see two sixes, I roll for an ult. Uh. Overgrowth. So this is one of the ways that Control Treant finishes the game. In the same way that Shadow Thief wants to get up to 15 CP and then hit you for 15 damage every turn, Treant on the Control Path wants to get to the point where they have so many spirits that spending two spirits off of the board to deal eight damage is totally acceptable. They've got the, they've got the economy to sustain it. Damage Treant is not going to do that because Damage Treant is evolving to Dryad, spending Dryad for plus three damage every turn, and they're never going to have a point in the game where this full house roll of Overgrowth is going to look good because they're never going to have enough spirits to pay for it. Yeah. In, in my opinion. Uh, I will tell you, yeah. This ability, I love it. I, I say I'm more of a Damage Treant when I play them, but I have... Because most of the time I actually didn't really use the dread. I was more, I was trying to do more damage, 
but I wasn't using my spirits. And when I got this, that was my big damage burst. Yet. Yeah. And that I have killed somebody with that before. Well, and the ability to make it undefendable damage is That's a big well, deal right? on a character board that doesn't have much undefendable. That said, you have to have a wellspring to do it. And I, again, if you're on the control path and you're focusing on using your saplings to draw a bunch of cards and you can set yourself up to have the wellspring there towards the end of the game and use it for that, it, that is I that is rainbow unicorn land for the control tree comboing off. And that can happen. It is not the game plan I generally go into my Treant games looking for. Uh, yeah, I would say I like Damage Treant a lot more there. Yeah, if you <laughs> and if you're on Damage Treant, I don't think you upgrade Overgrowth. Yeah. You uh, just don't. You don't. But if you're Control Treant, always upgrade, because you get the two spirits, four damage originally. Mm-hmm. That's plus eight, which well, is twelve damage. That's like an ult's worth, except the only. And if you have a wellspring, it is well, essentially. Well, let's worth. and keep in mind, if you, after you count spirits, you can then spend the dryad. Yeah. So you can <laughs> bump it up another. Uh, I think if everything goes well with mm-hmm. with the, tra- I think you can get up to like eighteen damage off of an overgrowth with everything chaining together. Oh, I thought it was fifteen. Because it's four. Yeah, 15 undefendable. Yeah, okay, maybe I did my math wrong there. So yeah. he, he can get up there and damage. And if you're on the control path, you could play the overgrowth upgrade late because it's your finisher. Like, yeah. you, you don't care if it comes late. You're not looking to do this power multiple times over the course of the game. So this does put this upgrade you in kind of a weird place. Once. It's an auto sell for some treant strategies, and it's a great card at any point in the game for, other tr- for different treant strategies. So it does put it in kind of a... Um, I guess let's talk about Wake the Forest. Hang on, let me get this out of the way. And before we do, we'll talk about the flavor text. Which I skipped over last time. Do you time. want to read the flavor text? Uh, you can do why the, not? the flavor honors. Uh, woe to you who awakens the forest itself. I actually like that flavor text. I do too. I think it kind of fits everything it, he's got going on. It fits his character too. But it's not as on the nose as like Shadow Thief where it's like, okay, come on, man. Shadow <laughs> like you, you've tipped over into cheesy now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as an ultimate goes, you and potentially a chosen teammate gain Wellspring. Again, that's a pretty low impact healing effect. Uh, you can grow five spirits. That's quite good. Barbed Vine is nice. If you factor in the Barbed Vine damage on top of the 10 damage that the Treant's doing, that's probably another 2, so that's like a 12 damage ultimate. Uh, if you use that 5 spirits to get all the way up to a Dryad, there's another 3. So potentially a 15 damage ultimate once you calculate in all the sub-effects. Honestly, this does kind of set Treant up better for a next turn. Like, this ultimate isn't like the Barbarian where he's going to come in and just kill you because he triggered his ult and he's going to punch you in the face repeatedly. This is a setup to the final blow, not the final blow. Yeah, and I think that comes down to the fact that this character leans so heavily into the spirit-growing economy. Yes. Uh, Honestly, I'd say you, if you're lucky enough, trigger an ult, then do overgrowth. (laughs) Overgrowth next turn because you have the well spring. You have the spirits out. That is... That is a combo uh, worth pointing out. That is 25 out. undefendable damage. This ultimate sets up your your overgrowth very, very well. And if you have the upgrade on the overgrowth, that is 25 undefendable damage in two turns. All right, so we have Vengeful Vines, and this is where I want to take a second to kind of talk about the trance damage output. There are not many damage-producing rolls on this board, and there are even fewer damage-producing rolls that you can get super consistently small straights and basic attacks are going to be the bread and butter of treant damage they don't do a lot of upfront damage like seven is the maximum you can get from a vengeful vine and seven is the maximum you can get from a splinter seven is not like a super impressive damage number but when you combine it with the fact that that is actually going to be eight or in sometimes nine because or ten. Of, because of the barbed vines well it could be ten. Oh, uh, drad oh Sure, uh, eight or nine with the Bard Vine, and then another plus three with the Dryad, which could push us up to like 11 or 12 damage. Now that's like ultimate level damage on a small straight, on a basic attack. These these are going to be the powers that you roll all the time. The thing with Treant is you roll the things that are easy to get, 
you burn your dryads, you inflict barbed vines, and that's how you do your DPS. Exactly. I mean, what else is there to be said about that? That is how the Treant works. Uh, the upgrade lets you bump up to 8 damage, is 1 extra damage worth 2 CP. I mean, <sighs> then look at his bitter root ability. If it's like there. turn 1 or 2, I think this is to totally worth upgrading, depending upon the, the composition of the rest of your hand. Uh, honestly, I'm looking more towards the better root ability for late game, which is deal one undefendable for, per spirit. Oh, that doesn't say undefendable. That says pure. Okay. Remember how we <laughs> talked about pure damage? <laughs> uh, so if you're on the control treant path and you've got spirits for days, this is potentially a better role than overgrowth depending upon what you're trying to do if you don't have the wellspring and your opponent has like a nasty defense that you need to worry about maybe even if you have the full house you only present the three leaves and you do i mean max damage if you have all the spirits is six so it's not a ton of damage and it's pure so you can't modify it you can't use the dryad after it's counted but if you're the control treant you probably have the spirits for it and you're probably not in that big of a hurry. Like, you don't have to do massive damage every turn. I mean, it's in the name. He's a controlly yeah. guy. So, I don't think you buy this upgrade for Bitterroot. Uh, Honestly, mo most of the time I sell it, but I just wanted to bring up Bitterroot is a good ability. Yeah, it, it has its use cases for sure. It is. It is expensive at 2 CP. Yeah, I feel like... Uh, but this is also a character that has a built-in way to produce CP by spending his spirits. So 2 CP is a lot cheaper for the Treant than it is for, say, the Ninja, who doesn't have a lot of CP generation. Or the Paladin. No, the Paladin, Paladin has... <laughs> I don't like the Paladin, so I can't remember his ability. You're, at, you're on your own on that hot take. <laughs> um, yeah. Ninja, Barbarian. Uh, Barbarian, I almost run out of CP first turn, always. Yeah, Barbarian's another one who's really throttled on the CP economy. So it, if you're going the, the damage path, and you have other cards in your hand that can generate CP, I think a turn one or two Vengeful Vines upgrade is probably fine. After probably turn two, maybe turn three, this is an auto sell. And if you're control treant, you can definitely play this deeper into the game, and probably for different reasons. Uh, yeah. I pretty much agree. But still, even with that, I feel like it's a sell for me. I most of the time just sell it. All right, Call of the Wild. So this is the large straight, and it is a base damage of 8, which is fine-ish. It's it's not great for large straight damage, but it's not bad either. 8 damage is respectable. But However... it's it, This is its other thing is, uh, so you roll 4 after that, and for every one of your most common die, the stick, uh, you add a damage. So... You could possibly add four. You could possibly make this a large straight for twelve unupgraded, and even mm -hmm. if you don't get the other stuff, uh, also technically fifteen uh, defendable because of dryad. Uh, if you get uh, the leaf, you get a wellspring, which is really good setup for overgrowth. And if you get a six uh, per six this time instead of just on a leaf uh, mm -hmm. six, uh, you grow one spirit per six. Uh, I don't like that the leaf is on so if you get x multiple leaves in the call of the wild they're burned that said i'm pretty sure the wellspring it's stack one. limit is one so even if you earn multiples you wouldn't be able to take them yeah uh so that's to me that's like a little bit of a, a blemish in the middle of an otherwise very solid power i mean honestly even if you did roll multiple leaves yeah the stack limit's in your way uh the upgrade lets you roll five bonus dice which could produce the raw damage output of this a up to six. 13 just no. by itself yeah 8 plus 5 13 now if you I also have I... a dryad you oh, can wait, add i was three. thinking about the dryad and i was like no no that should be 16 yeah so a 13 damage now admittedly you're not going to get five sticks every time you throw the bonus dice sure but hypothetically speaking 13 damage output. If you pop a dry out, that's 16 damage. Now we're up into like damage territory of a fully kitted out shadow thief, of somebody popping off an ultimate. This is big damage stuff going on here. Uh, yeah, I feel like his ultimates, uh, going back to ultimate bees, I heard you say popping off an ultimate. His ultimate's just a setup for his normal abilities, which are in a way better than his ultimate sometimes. Yeah. 
Like, the the treant rewards you for getting an ultimate like in the early and mid game more than other characters. Like the Shadow Thief getting an early game ultimate is disaster. Horrible. Like it sucks. You you probably <laughs> uh, go for the worst mini all ability, which honestly I don't like. Uh, the uh, upgrade for Call of the Wild, uh, in addition to the extra dice, the bonus die on the main power gives you Enrapture, and this is a power that I actually really like. Now, is it worth two CP? Uh, I don't know. Add the extra die to the bonus attack. But again, we have to keep in mind this isn't just the four undefendable damage, which there's not a lot of undefendable on the trans board. Four is a fine number for a character it's, with a defense as solid as his, but it's plus the barbed vine. And if you have a dryad, plus the dryad. Sure. So this could be five or six with the barbed vine damage. This could be pushing up close to ten damage if you have a dryad. That's a pretty solid power. In damage treant, this is an upgrade I will sometimes play. But then I... again, if I'm in damage treant, I don't always have the surplus of resources to like chase sixes. So I mean, you're saying you don't chase sixes, and then over uh, back upwards, uh, over there, we have that two six two leaf ability that you're saying you use. Yeah, well, I mean, tend is an important ability. But you can get into some trouble when you chase sixes. I think we've all learned that lesson once or twice. Unless it's me playing the Barbarian because I have an outrageous luck. I, I have a hard time being super prescriptive with this upgrade. Because there's times where I think it's really good and you should totally play it. And there's other games where it's practically an auto sell. And that's true whether you're on damage treant or control treant. I think, I think it has a home in both play styles. Uh, so... It's a maybe upgrade, I guess. Mm, I would play this. I I play this fifty percent of the time, so I agree with F you. Fifty percent of the time. I mean, I mean, I can maybe next game not play, it, so it's a uh, forty nine percent of the time. <laughs> All right, <laughs> nature's grasp. So this is the other big time finishing move for the control trant. So control trant has your ultimate. They have overgrowth. And they have Nature's Grasp. And these are the, the big bursts of damage. As Damage Treant, you probably don't mess with any of those three powers because you're not going to have the CP and the cards to fund them in the way that the Control Treant will. But this thing lets you grow two spirits and then deal five undefendable damage plus one damage per spirit. At maximum, that's going to be 11 damage output. At absolute minimum, if your board's naked when you go into this power, that's going to be seven damage output. I mean, wait... So, seven, so s 11, but then dryad. So, yeah, 13. Sure. I, no, 14. I did my math wrong. J just counting spirits, it'll get you up to 11. If you, you then spend the dryad after it's been count counted, yes, that will get you up to 14. So, this is another instance of the trance board where if things go plan A, everything's going right, you're doing like almost an ultimate amount of. Of damage with on a non-ultimate power, which is crazy. Uh, with only having to roll four of the sixes instead of one more. <laughs> uh, nature's blessing is not great. I I never roll that. I you, I mean I would take this over a whiff, but I probably won't because I more or less never pay for this upgrade. Honestly, it gives you one I... extra damage on the main power, and the nature's blessing power I think is sting a whiff. Uh. I hate Nature's Blessing if I play this. You can you can definitely you say it, huh? you can definitely say if I play this I'm not looking too good because I absolutely never play this card. Yeah, I just I sell this. I don't think there's any situation where you need to play this. One extra damage uh, on the main power is not worth two CP at all. And then the think. other ability is worth zero CP. Yeah, and the other ability this is it will bail you out of a failed ultimate. Like if somebody does something to your ultimate uh, I, and they, they twice as wild you and they steal your ultimate from you you can this is better than a whiff but like it's barely. all it's like whiff is here uh, nature's blessing is here <laughs> yeah uh, finally we come to the treant's defense which is actually quite good uh, it's one of those defenses that it doesn't look good at first and but then once you really play with them you realize how good it is it's very consistent so one two three and six will all prevent one damage uh on average you're going to prevent two damage and occasionally you will grow a spirit 
and as we've said a bunch of times already in this video, anytime you grow spirit, the treant's happy. Uh, the upgrade, I think, is totally worth it. It is expensive. 3 CP is kind of a high cost, but it lets you roll an additional die, which is going to increase your damage soak capability, which is really important for this character in either mode. Uh, you still occasionally grow spirit, and every once in a while, you get a low-impact wellspring. Uh... Yeah, that wellspring is just my setup to overgrowth. There's certainly going to be games... If it's, like, turn six, you probably don't play this defense. Upgrade. No. No. Like, at that point... Unless, uh, you, unless you're playing so controlling, everyone's still at 50 health. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, if you have a huge surplus of CP, and there's still really high health values on both characters, and it's turn six, then sure, in that situation, play it. But thinking about your typical 1v1 dice throwing game, by like turn six or seven, people are probably getting pretty close to dead. Uh, and at that point, I, I, it's just generally true for most people's defense upgrades. If you don't see it until the last two or three turns of the game, just sell it you for the extra CP. Probably don't upgrade it. <laughs> like all cards, you don't play it if you're on the final turn. Because sure. that also requires you well, to... Well, that's I not mean, true of all cards. I mean... Like Twice as Wild? Is that banned from being played on the final I thing? said upgrades. <laughs> uh, this is not a flashy defense upgrade. Like Moon Elf or Shadow Thief. You know, Shadow Thief throws a couple sixes and it's like, Whoa! You're never going to get that kind of defense roll with Treant. But what it does is it solidly chips away at your opponent's damage, taking their damage from average to below average, or from high down to average. At the same time, you're putting on Barbed Vines, which is chipping away their health total and allowing the Treants kind of average-ish damage to tick up into above average, which is really how the damage Treant wins the damage race. It's not like Artificer or Pyromancer, where it's big numbers all the time. It's, it's this game of inches. And I think there's a real elegance in, in how this guy plays. I like this character a great deal. Uh, I like them, but I'd rather roll some Death Blossoms on the ninja. <laughs> Elegance is probably the wrong word, because he's sort of the opposite of simple. It's it's Beauty is maybe the word I'm looking for, actually. Maybe complicated is the word you're looking for. Yeah, I, I like the complexity, but complexity is the opposite of elegance, so wrong word. All right, we're going to move through the last couple of cards here for the Treant. One CP... Gain a Wellspring. Very occasionally, this will turn an Overgrowth into an unexpected, undefendable attack that your opponent can't do anything about and just straight up win you the game. Most of the time, it's worth, like, a couple points of health. Pay one CP, heal two health. I mean, it's an insult. That's okay. So when you play it, as you save it, until you already have the Overgrowth rolled down, then you play the instep. Yes. Very occasionally, that will happen. Uh, I... Don't generally sell this card. E even I though usually... I'm not a huge fan of Wellspring, I don't generally sell it. I play this, and then I spend the Wellspring to get whatever healing I can get out of it. Usually, occasionally, I use it for Overgrowth. I keep it in my hand till I roll the Overgrowth, then I play it, and I get an undefendable up. Look at you <laughs> and your head games. Uh, stomp. So this is the... I love this the card. The Treants. Pay one, throw some dice, add some damage. Uh, it sticks, so you've got a pretty good chance of adding enough damage to get the barbed vine. Occasionally, you will use this on an attack where you're already inflicting a barbed vine just because you need the damage. I mean... That's not ideal. Overgrowth of this triad. <laughs> well, the thing is, the, the damage rolls that you're going to be using most frequently with Treant generate barbed vine on their own. So the Barbed Vine on this card is... Eh. It's of lesser value. Like, if you compare this to other characters' cards who have similar things, like Gunslinger does this, and if they, they hit three of a kind or whatever they it is, they inflict a knockdown. Um, that is more impactful. Again, most of the time, your attack is probably going to inflict Barbed Vine anyway. 
So to me, the barbed vine is the least interesting part of this card. This it's, is just your typical it's combat just modifier. It's just roll, you get three. I mean, you, you can roll you, five. You're almost damage. always going to play this. I don't think you sell this card unless there's a, like a very specific situation where you're at two CP and you have twice as wild in your hand and you want to make sure it's hot for the turn. And you get and you have like three uh, sixes and you can get that old. Well, no, you wouldn't be able to sell it at that point. You have no. to sell it before you go into the phase. Uh, no, most talking, most games you're gonna play this. We're talking cheating. I'm well, joking. No. I'm joking. I'm not. I uh, know. No. 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 Uh, downpour two CP to grow all existing spirits once each. It is shockingly difficult to get your spirit count set up to get max value out of this card. I have. <laughs> it, yeah. Well, it can happen, but you have to think about it. You have to try for it. And I, I feel like it's a sell. It's not worth the 2 CP based on how many turns it actually takes to set up. Yeah, I I think there's better ways to grow spirits. That being said, there are going to be times where you have a CP surplus and your back's against the wall and you really need a dryad to make sure you can push through that extra little bit of damage. And in those kind of situations, that's where I'll play this card. But yeah, I agree with you. Most of the time I sell this one. Yeah, based on how many turns it takes to set up, it's not worth 2 CP. Yeah, I wish it was one. Okay, I like this card. Will-O-Wisp. Cost one, you roll three dice, you deal collateral damage to all opponents on, on a stick, on a leaf you gain a wellspring, and on a, a six you grow a spirit. These are all on, so none of these stack. I don't like it. I like it. We uh, disagree on this one, I yeah. guess. Yeah. I actually... I just like having that collateral damage around. Yeah. Even if it's one, it's still damage, and... I mean, it is just one, though. Like, you can't make it more than one, and that doesn't feel super great. Now, if you... But, let's let's best-case scenario. Best-case scenario, you love this card. You pay one, you heal three, and you get the spirit you needed to... You get a dryad. Whether it's a sapling, because you needed to draw a card, or heal, or you needed a dryad. Like... That's the best case scenario for this card, and in that use case, it looks really good. And I actually... But that doesn't happen all the time. Most of the time, in my opinion, you're either going to roll two sticks and... Yeah, I feel like most of the time, this is pay one CP, deal one damage, and do nothing else. Actually, no, I was going to say, uh, get do one collateral damage to all enemies in case you're playing two-player, and uh, gain a wellspring. This does have some marginal use cases in Dice Throne Adventure. Anything that lets you deal damage to all opponents. Collateral is really good in Dice Throne Adventure, yeah. but don't talk about that till we get to the review. So, th this is a card I I sell this one pretty... If I was on... If you're in control like tree in game mode, you probably don't sell this, because you have more resources. But I, again, I tend to favor damage treant, so I'm a little more resource starved, and I need the CP more than I need that <laughs> Uh, pay three and grow three spirits. I think this one's pretty great, I, actually. This can get you all the way to a dryad. This can this can spread growth out. Essentially, you're paying one CP per. I mean, if you if you're cool with paying one CP here to have a one in three chance of growing a single spirit, this is three CP to for sure grow three spirits. That seems like a much better deal to me. Looks, your face says you disagree. Do you disagree? I like that logic, and I agree with that logic. But the way I play, I'm run down. But you still like this card? No, but the way I play, I'm most of the time the, the way I play characters is I run myself down on CP, so I never, almost never get to use this. Yeah, stage of the game matters a lot too. I mean, it's a really good card if you can use it. But I wish when it was an do instant. you get to use it? If you could do this during roll phase, and you could go from. No spirits to a dryad out of nowhere, buffing your attack by three. That would be oh my god! Sick. It would be. I mean, oh my god! You gosh. can't because this is a main phase power. No, but I was that would say, be pretty cool. You, you just out of nowhere have. Uh, <laughs> I think you play this, have this. I think you play this more games than you sell it. Three re rolls. Just trance so reliant on spirits. This is direct CP to spirit exchange. It's essentially three turns worth of growth. I don't know. I'll stop trying to convince you it's good. I uh, know. I think the card is good, but I don't get to play it enough. So it's most of the time, it's really good when you get to play it. But 
It is a little Most expensive. Most of the time, I don't get to play it. So, Harvest, this doesn't cost anything, and you can discard three spirits, uh, up to three spirits. You gain one CP for each spirit, and if you discard at least two, you gain a Wellspring. I, I don't like this card. Yeah, I saw. I saw. Um, again, very narrow circumstance of you have the Twice as Wild in hand, you really have to hit... you your mini alt or something well actually trying to hit the mini alt this card would be terrible because you'd lose all your spirits before you get to it uh, but but you have you have a dice fixing card oh that you rough. don't have the cp to play for and you know you have to hit it really bad in that specific situation maybe you play this if you're going for overgrowth you don't play this card because it takes all your spirits away no if you have all the spirits from control okay Trian, so you have all six spirits you get rid of two and that makes it undefendable well, you still have to then roll the overgrowth. Because, again, Two this CP. is a main phase card. If this was red or orange and I could use it during the roll phase to, like, surprise burst my opponent down, I would probably play this card ever as it is. I, I don't <laughs> know that... I would played this in Dice Throne Adventures. I have played it there. I don't think I've ever played this card... In, in real time game. One versus one. Like real time. I think I've game. sold it every time. Now watch, there's gonna be a video of me playing Trant that comes out where I actually played it and I forgot. <laughs> oh, now you have a reputation. Generally speaking, to I don't like that card. Now you have a reputation but, and never play that. But I acknowledge there are times where the CP is worth it. But for the most part, I don't like this card. Okay, Mother Tree. This is the Trant's promo card, like all the other promo cards. Uh, you roll a dice. If you get the right result, good stuff happens. If you get any other result, you draw a card. On this one, you. Uh, are rolling for a six and you get to grow four spirits that is pretty good yeah uh, it's a six and you only have a if, one out of six if we compare that to some of the trans <laughs> other powers that allow him to grow multiple spirits you need way more sixes <laughs> like yeah if, but this one is ten. uh but the thing is you have two re-rolls for those uh, and this one is a one out of six chance no re-rolls uh, as far as promo cards go I think this one's very good yeah. Like, the upside is massive. The, and the downside the, is so The bad. downside is just draw a card. So. Oh, also, uh, all of the promo cards, I believe, are free. Yeah, yeah, they're all free main phase cards. So this is like, you, you just play it, and boom, you have a chance to do it. So no matter what, it's a good outcome. So, really. parting thoughts on Trant. Uh, this was the character I played against in my first ever game of Dice Throne. And Joe is a cheater. And told me that the prevent one defense on the tree actually meant he got to prevent one of my incoming damage and deal damage back to me. Uh, which made me hate this guy a lot when I first played him. Because if his defense deals damage and soaks it, he's a much better character. <laughs> when he's already so good. Yeah, I, I think this guy's good. Uh, I think he's like a solid kind of mid-tier ter- character. And I don't think it's because his power level is necessarily strictly lower than other characters like Pyromancer or Shadow Thief. It's that he presents far more decision points. His complexity is very high. He's going to struggle. New players are going to struggle with this guy for a while before they figure him out. And because of all that, I think it kind of prevents the Treant from being uh, a more widely played character. Yeah, but once you get him down... He is amazingly good. Yeah, he can be extremely frustrating I in the like hands this of a capable player. I really like this guy, but it really just depends on how experienced you are. Honestly, I think on his box, isn't he a level 3 in difficulty? Oh, I think he's like a, a top okay, complexity. Okay, good, because I was going to say, if they're putting him at level 3 difficulty, uh, No, I, I think he's like a level wrong. 6 complexity, although I'm not sure. We... I, I, do. I don't think they list complexity on the battle chest the way they do on the back of the 1v1 boxes. Uh, I remember him being, like, really complex. So, the, I believe so Roxley does acknowledge that he is a uh, One second. a harder-to-learn character, uh, but I think it's rewarding. I, I think the things that he does and the fact that you have the ability to, particularly in a tournament setting, you can switch... He's a six. Oh, yeah, he is a six. Okay. He is a... Oh, gosh. A six. Uh, you can switch between being the control or the beatdown, depending upon what the matchup presents. 
that gives him a little bit more flexibility. And I think long term in the competitive dice throne scene, I think the Treant's going to be one of those characters who steadily rises further up the ranks. Uh. Uh, yeah, I really like this guy, and the, the more players that come and the longer this game is out, the more people who are going to play him. Well, yeah, that kind of goes for all the characters, right? Well... Like, and, literally every day, more people have played the Trant than... Well, no, I'm talking in more... The longer the game's been out, the more experienced newer player, uh, what used to be new players, uh, they will get more experience, which sure. means they will be able to master this guy easier and see how good he is, which means he will be played more the more as the longer the game is out. I think he's an interesting puzzle to solve when you're playing against him, too. Uh, I Agreed. Think the fact that you can't interact with his spirit economy. You know, you look at somebody like Artificer, you can blow up his synth. You can really mess with the sub-economy of the Pyromancer. But Treant's sub-economy is kind of protected. All right, so any final thoughts about Treant? Uh, he's a good character, and bye. Go win some games.